What's up riders, Old Man Ronan here and welcome back to the channel. Yes, we are on the Classic 500 again today and uh, there's a reason for that. I get tons of questions on why I bought a Classic 500. Well, we're going to go over that right now. Stay tuned. You know, Frequent watchers of the channel know that uh, you know I spent most of my life on uh, on Harley Davidsons and uh, Triumphs and Hondas and Nortons and insert insert a few other Suzukis and stuff like that in there as well too. But I didn't really have a whole lot of uh, of experience on Royal Enfield simply because there wasn't really a dealer around, and I didn't really know anything about them. I mean, I knew that they had a history, and I knew that they, you know, back uh, during World War II, you know, the Flying Flea and all that stuff, because I'm a huge history buff. But, you know, when they moved to India, I never really, never really thought much about them anymore, because nobody, uh, one dealer I knew of in Ohio sold them. And uh, he really wasn't the uh, kind of guy that wants to s wanted to sell them. He had them on there. In fact, I test rode, you guys are frequent watchers, you know that I test rode a, a bullet back in the early 2000s. And uh, like I said, the guy kind of talked me out of buying one. He wanted to sell me a vintage uh, Honda, and I ended up selling him my vintage Honda. <laughs> so I guess that works backwards. But the reality of it is, I really didn't know that much about him. Lo and behold, I got into the uh, Himalayan back in, uh, what, 2020? Uh, and I literally fell in love with the Himalayan. So much so that I started, you know, wanting to ride more Royal Enfields. And that got me the attention of Royal Enfield. We were able to get a long-term test ride on the Meteor 350, which later became my motorcycle. And it's been gone perfectly ever since because I became a Royal uh, Enfield brand ambassador and I, I really wanted to go back and try some of the other motorcycles. I mean, I've ridden every modern since 2020 uh, Royal Enfield that's been released except for the ones that haven't made it to the United States yet, like the Hunter 350, which I'm super excited to try to ride. But uh, when it becomes available, I guarantee you I'll be on it. And I'll be honest with you, I really want to have a, I want to buy a 650 down the road uh, or, you know, maybe find one that I can fix up. I mean, I'm not going to be able to buy a new one. I just simply can't afford it. I know a lot of you guys say, well, they're really inexpensive. They are, but my budgets aren't as big as they used to be. I mean, I'm, I'm not exactly in the sp <laughs> spring chicken. So what I have to do is I have to look for the best deals. And that's what I found in this classic 500 because I've always wanted to go back and ride one and, and just, you know, get a better feel for, hey, chickens, what are you guys doing here in the middle of the road? Come on, what are you doing? Get out of the way. <laughs> fried chicken tonight, baby, fried chicken tonight. Fried chicken tonight, fried chicken tonight. But the uh, reality of it is, I, I've always wanted to get back and ride one. Like, I mean, the last time I rode a classic 500 was, like I said, back in the early 2000s. And I was on it for literally 15 minutes. And I, I loved the way it looked. I rode, uh, I rode one of the, uh, the, uh, the standard bullets. I didn't ride one that looked like this. And this has always been, this Battle Green or the Desert Storm has always been one that I really wanted to, to uh, check out. Golly, is it not beautiful out here today? Huh, don't you wish you were me? <laughs> but, uh, you know, when I started looking after that, I, you know, I rode the Classic 350 down in Savannah, and of course I've been riding it, several different of uh, the new models, the 2022s uh, of the Classic 350, and I love that J-Series engine, man. But there's always been a part of me that says, Old man Ronan, you need to check out one of the 500s and get a better feel for some of the uh, some of the, uh, the the history of why these motorcycles are so beloved in India. Now, I, I don't have any of the early early ones over around me, but I found this guy uh, up in New York. A uh, a gentleman had it, and uh, he had it for a really good price. And so I literally, hello Hawk, I literally, uh, hey there's chickens back there, <laughs> I literally uh, went up to New York and, and uh, put, uh, put this motorcycle on my Jeep, I have a little carrier that in case something happens with my motorcycles I can haul a, a lighter one, and, uh, that, and that's exactly what I did, I, I brought it back from uh, New York and then got it, uh, got it inspected, which we have to do on out of state motorcycles, and the rest is history, now I've got one, and I'll tell you what, I'm enjoying this motorcycle as much as I do any of my other ones, and maybe just a little bit more. And I know that sounds kind of funny, 
but this thing is a blast to ride. It really brings the joy of vintage style. Even though this is a 2013, uh, and it only has, well, as of right now, 324 miles on it. I know. <laughs> but it brings the joy of riding a vintage style motorcycle to me, which, you know, it's right in my realm. I mean, that is my, that is my wheelhouse, is, is riding older style motorcycles. And uh, th this guy here is just it. Well, if you haven't watched the original video I had on the Classic 500, let's do a little walk around right now. But uh, yeah, I, I think it's a beautiful motorcycle. This is the Battle Green. Uh, I, the, I did a mod already. I know. I did a mod. And guess what it was? Yeah, a heel toe shifter. <laughs> because I simply love riding heel toe shifters. And I think it matches this bike perfectly to have a heel toe shifter on a bike that looks like it comes from the late 40s and early 50s. And uh, it just literally adds to the ambiance of what this motorcycle means to me and what it's all about. And you know, riding these back roads like this, man, this thing is a blast. So I've got, I've got myself three choices right now in motorcycles that I can ride. For my long distance uh, light or ultra light touring, we've got the Meteor 350. For all of my off-road and, and uh, ADV style adventures, I've got the Himalayan. And uh, now I've got this just to fart around on. <laughs> I mean, and that's really the best way for me to say it. Because this is the kind of motorcycle that I just love to go out and, and even though it is only a single uh, seat, this is the kind of motorcycle that I like to just go out and just putt around on. And, uh, and it also gives me the feel of what the, the Indian market is, is why this bike is so beloved. Because this thing is fun. Yes, it is quirky. There is a lot of quirks to this motorcycle. But you know what? There's a lot of quirks to Harley Davidson. There's a lot of quirks to Triumph. There's a lot of quirks to a lot of motorcycles, and that's what makes them special, what makes them, or ha gives them character. And this thing is loaded with character. <laughs> I mean, every time I pull into a stop somewhere to grab a burger or put some gas in it, people come up to me and say, man, is it, what year is that, 1944, 1945? I don't know, man, it's a modern motorcycle. It's fuel injected. It's a 500cc, and uh, it's, uh, but it does have a drum rear brake, <laughs> which the new classics do not have the new classic 350s but man this thing is just a blast and yes over 60 miles an hour you're gonna get a little bit of a vibration or if you're pulling hard like I'm doing uh, up this hill right here you're gonna get a little vibration but it's it's one of those things that it's not that bad hey let's go down this way last minute decision luckily nobody's behind me hey it turned off my turn signal yeah, one thing you can't tell on this bike is when my turn signals are on or off. <laughs> oh, man. Again, we got some of the prettiest roads here in this part of Ohio, guys. I'm telling you, particularly this time of year, I'm getting blasted in the face with leaves falling down. But, wow, what a beautiful day for a ride. It, you know, the temperature is amazing. It's uh, supposed to be a high of 75 today, and I'll put the Celsius up in the corner. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's just a beautiful, beautiful day today. And uh, I, I really am enjoying my my time here on this wondrous little motorcycle. And it, 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 I'll tell you, the more I ride it, the more I like it. Now, I love all of what I've ridden as far as uh, uh, Royal Enfield. But there's something about this bike, and I just can't... Well, it's the quirkiness. That's what it is. I was going to say, I can't put my finger on it, but yeah, I'm going to put my finger all over it because this thing is quirky as hell, <laughs> but it's fun. That's kind of what the, the thrill of this bike is. The fact that it's, it's, 
it's quirky. <laughs> I know I've mentioned it before, uh, but that is really what makes the Royal Enfield Classic 500 a desirable bike for me because it is a lot of fun. And like I said, the, the vibration, the way that you sit on top of the bike as opposed to sitting down in it. I mean, those are the kind of things that, that you know, a lot of people wouldn't really necessarily like, but to me, it makes it unique. And I like unique. You know, this is a bike that looks like it came right out of the 40s. I mean, and literally, except for the fuel injection, the technology is a literally just came right out of the 40s and 50s. It's not a high-tech motorcycle. But with that said, it's still a super pleasure to ride. I mean, it is a blast. And I think that's kind of one of the reasons why I think I'm really enjoying this bike more than, than, I, than I thought I would. I thought, you know, oh, I'm just going to get the bike, and that way I've got a test for, you know, you know, to, to give me what the, the, the culture's more like as far as uh, other motorcycles. And to be honest with you, it, this bike here, it, it, ha it offers more than just that culture. It offers a, like a look back into time, and, and it gives me the, the feeling of why this bike was so and is so popular in, uh, in India. Just had to make a pause here because uh, I think I found... Uh, one of the main reasons this bike and uh, Royal Enfield in general is so popular in India and throughout the most of the world. Check these videos out. A really great motorcycle and uh, yeah like I said in the quirks the the vibration you get the looks of it the low technology uh, I mean those are all things that you know I uh, you know I've been saying for how many years on the channel now well two I've only been had the channel for two years but uh, that's some of the things I've been talking about without a doubt as long as I can can I can remember I love I love simplicity simplicity of design simplicity of a uh, function and, and something that's going to give me from point A to point B. Because you know what? In India, the Classic 500 uh, and the Classic 350 and of course now the Meteor and, and obviously the Hunter and uh, throw the Himalayan in there as well too. Those are motorcycles that these, those folks ride every day. They're th they are their main mode of transportation. They, they run these bikes 365 days, 7 days a week. And you have to have a motorcycle that that is going to really hold up and it proves to me that the uh, that these bikes do hold up I mean are there some quirks and other things that could possibly go wrong I mean they've been trying to make these things budget bikes for the longest time because you know the uh, the fact that a lot of folks don't have a lot of money but uh, but when they can finally afford one of these they want it to last a lifetime and I think that's one of the reasons why this bike is so popular uh, in India, which now is becoming more and more popular throughout the world. I mean, there's a huge following in, in, in England or the UK. There's a huge following in Australia and New Zealand. I talk to folks all the time about, the, you know, that I have the uh, 500 and they, they love to hate them. <laughs> I know it sounds funny because, you know, they, they don't like the vibration, but they love the vibration. You know what I mean? They don't like the, uh, uh, the, 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 the way that it feels and sounds, but they love the way that it feels and it sounds. So it's kind of one of those love-hate relationships. And that's one of the most important things that make a motorcycle a quirky motorcycle that is just a joy to ride. You think about it this way. A lot of guys think the KLR 650 is exactly the same. It's quirky as hell, but people love them. The Sportster, 
the uh, Evo Sportster or the old Ironheads were quirky as hell. People love them and you can still find them today even though they quit making them this year which is a dirty rotten shame. Uh, you know, I don't know. It, companies always got to change stuff that I love. <laughs> Well, I really hope you enjoyed this uh, video today. It was full of uh, some news and also some views. If you did, make sure you give us a big thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe. Hit that bell notification button. Share and comment. You know, I read all the comments. And comment on as many as I possibly can. Until next time, guys, ride safe and keep her on two wheels, baby. <laughs>